Guys, today we are going to be spending some time at the auction. Granted, it is a public auction. Everybody is available to attend. Nevertheless, we're gonna see if we can buy some cars today and take you through what's involved in looking at cars while they're sitting in the compound. So stay tuned. So we are at the auction right now, and right now we're gonna go take a look at a Ford Ranger. It's a 2010 model, and we'll show you a few of the things that I look for when we're looking at vehicles. So this is the truck here, and basically we, we do a walk around to make sure that there's no major blemishes or scratches or rust. We're also going to get down underneath and check the frame because these things have had frame issues. The other thing that we'll do is we'll look down in here between the box because on these Ford Rangers, they were prone to rust. And as you can see, it's, the paint is peeling and she's pretty soft. So on this particular truck, no matter how good it looks, we are going to steer clear of it. So another one that we're looking at is this uh, 2013 Chrysler 200. This is a really nice vehicle. Uh, it's only got 111,000 kilometers. And if we look on the inside, it is all leathered up. It's got the moonroof. This also has the V6. So we're gonna do a quick walk around to see if there's any blemishes on this car. A few little light scratches, that sort of thing will buff out. We're not too concerned about that. Tires, they look like they are fairly new. Wheels are in good shape. And a little scuff right there, and a little scratch there. Again, no big deal, that's just small stuff. And we'll also take a look at the inspection. It was just inspected in July, so mechanically it should be okay, safety-wise. We look at the windshield. There's no major damage on the windshield. There's a small little chip right there, which we probably can fix up. Also, we'll get inside, we'll check We'll check all the accessories, make sure that all the gauges are working properly. Low fuel light is on. It says oil change required, no biggie. So we check things like the sunroof, make sure the sunroof opens and closes properly. I'll also check all four windows. Granted, on a day like today, these seats already feel like they're heated, but it's got heated seats. We're gonna check the air conditioner, check the wipers all that sort of thing. We're also gonna let this engine warm up a bit to make sure we don't hear any noises in the motor. This is a 3.6. I'm also gonna show you a couple things to look for on the 3.6 that you'll wanna be aware of if you're looking for one used, and uh, we'll go from there. And one good thing to point out is that this car has been undercoated, so that's a good sign. It should be in really good shape underneath. We're gonna pull the dipstick and check the oil as well. Oil looks clean, it's right up where it's supposed to be. So on this Chrysler 200, one of the common things on these V6s is, is the placement of the oil filter is there's a housing down in there with a cooler and everything, and it is prone to leaking. So you gotta get a flashlight and shine it down inside the intake to see if there's any oil. That is one of the most common things on these. So the AC does work really well on this thing. Another thing that we'll always do too is we're not permitted to drive these vehicles around but we will just check the forward and reverse gears, make sure that they do go forward and back. Somebody had asked me once on another video, you know, yeah, it might go forward and back, but what's to say that you've got all gears once you get it on the highway? Well, that's where arbitration comes into play. Uh, you know, we've got to drive this thing approximately, you know, 75, 80 miles home. We're gonna get a pretty good gist of whether this is a good car or not on that ride. If something happens between here, five miles down the road, it's not shifting, it's not going through all the gears, the transmission's not locking up or something like that, then nine times out of 10, we bring it right back and we can either cancel the sale or have it looked into on an arbitration deal. So, you know, we know what we're getting pretty good by the time that we get this thing back to our shop. And again, we go all over them. Is it a chance to take? Yes, it is. They are used cars, but we'll double check, make sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be long before you guys ever pick it up from us. And it does have forward and reverse. Again, uh, low mileage, fairly reliable car. I'm not too worried about this one. I think, like I said, we're gonna try and pick it up. And as a bonus, it comes with two keys. Not every vehicle 
has two keys. In some cases, that is another expense that you've got to look after. Sometimes customers want that second key, and on these Chryslers, they can run you anywhere from you know 150 to 300 bucks, depending on the vehicle. So we've got a couple other vehicles that we're looking at, and coincidentally, they're both side-by-side, -side, lot number 95 and 103. So we're gonna go over these cars. They're both 2010s. This is a Fusion, and it's an SEL or a sport model. It's got loaded up features, and we're gonna take a look at it and see what kind of condition it is. We don't mind buying 2010s once in a while, as long as everything fits the bill. Same thing with the Forester, so let's take a look. Windshield looks in good shape. It's got a sunroof. Interior on these cars was a little bit different with the two-tone. I kind of like it. This one does have some wear, but kind of conducive to a vehicle that's got 150,000 kilometers on it. A couple of clips come off there. No big deal. We'll get down and check the rocker panels here in a minute. Now this car is all-wheel drive, which means it probably also has the 3.5 liter engine. And other than the paint touch up on those two front fenders, I don't see anything keeping us from bidding on this vehicle. So, also the headlights are badly faded. We're gonna have to recondition those. And a little spot on the leading edge of the hood. Someone's already touched it up, so might not have to worry about that. Let's get down and look at those rocker panels. So, that is not good. So the rockers are shot on this car. Uh, so that is a 100% deal breaker on this fusion let's go over and take a look at the uh, forester so right out of the gate i see a ton of scratches there's some paint touch up major work that's going to be done in that corner scratches all down the side of it here as well as some rust on that fender right there tires are getting down weak brakes so as a rule this probably is going to be too much uh, of a vehicle for us to look at and as I open the door we also got a very very strong smell of cigarettes so that's a hard one to kill too misalignment on the hood yeah we we'll stay away from this one now a couple of vehicles that generally tend to be pretty good sellers for us are the Kia Fortes the uh, Kia Rios Hyundai Accent Elantra stuff like that there's a few of them here we're gonna take a look at them as well So the first thing that we notice on this 2014 Kia Rio 5 is that the battery is dead, the car does not start. So we'll have to get them over here to give this a boost for us. But while we get the hood up, we can check the oil. And there is none showing on the dipstick. So that tells me, leave it alone. So here's a 2014 Honda Civic, and in Canada, these are the number one selling used car in Canada. This one's only got 53,000 kilometers. We're gonna walk around. We do see some scratching on the front bumper. A couple of spots on the fender here. We'll look inside, the interior is fairly clean. Now this is a manual transmission car, but it is loaded up with air conditioning, heated seats, uh, cruise control. So uh, we're gonna take a look around. We'll come back, we'll give her a start and see uh, how she sounds. Now, there's light scratches all over the car. A little mark right there. So now that we're inside, let's start her up, see how she sounds. So when we first look at the dash, we notice that there is no warning lights. The emergency brake light is on, door ajar light is on, as well as the seat belt. Obviously, I'm not wearing my seat belt, just sitting here. AC seems like it's blowing cold. Again, like I said, it is a manual car. We don't normally go looking for manual transmission cars because there's not a huge call for them anymore. But if you don't have one, generally, you're gonna miss a sale when somebody comes in looking for one. So this being the number one selling car in Canada, might be a good opportunity to grab a hold of this one too so i think based on condition and what it is the mileage is good we will try and bid on this one as well <laughs> oh 
That's why no one's starting it. So as we're walking through the lot, we see this Dodge Journey, this 2009 with only 110,000 kilometers on it. And it is something that we sold back two or three years ago. And uh, one thing I did notice is that the AC does not work. Still fairly clean, low mileage. And uh, usually we can sell these things pretty good. So it might be something we pick up again. Wouldn't be the first time we've owned it. We can sell her one more time. Kevin said he wanted to be in my video, so here he is. So now that we've got our list, we're going to go to our resources and try and find out what these things are going to be selling for approximately and bid accordingly. So I've got my phone. We're going to look up some uh, values here and go from there. So guys, I think we did okay at the auction today. We did pick up the 2013 Chrysler 200 as well as the Chevy Malibu. So we're gonna make our way home and we'll close out this video. So we're about halfway home and I opted to drive the Chrysler 200 mainly because it's got a V6, leather seats, sunroof, nice riding car. We just stopped for a little break there about halfway home and uh, Ross says that the Malibu works really good. No complaints on that end. And well, my wife, she's driving old grandma and uh, we're probably about uh, 40 minutes away from home. So everyone's overall impressions of these two vehicles that we bought, well, seem to be A-OK. -okay. Now granted, the Chrysler 200 that I'm driving needs rotors in the front, definitely. When I put my foot on the brake at high speed, it's chugging there pretty good. So other than that, I don't anticipate finding anything, not a squeak, not a rattle whatsoever. So guys, I think we made up pretty good today. So guys, as I stand out here today on this Wednesday with my new haircut and my new beard trim, thanks to Century Barbers in St. Andrews, New Brunswick, also sporting the Sussex Beard Oil in the beard from them as well. So Sussex Beard Oil is a sponsor of this beard and this channel. So if you want your very own, you can go to sussexbeard.com and get your very own. Not to mention, Last Fit Auto Lighting. They are sponsors of the headlights, reverse lights and license plate lights here on Grandma. If you want your very own, you can go to lastfit.com and get your own, and you can use promo code OLDCARAUTOGUY10 to get 10% off your order. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you all. God bless. We'll do it again real soon.